Hello everyone, this is Trip's Exposing the Matrix and I'm Trip. Today's video is very special because this is the first video I have made in like four or five years. And I want to start off by thanking everybody who is still subscribed to me after all this time. I really appreciate you and I want to thank you so much. Today's video is going to show a comedian who fell and fractured her skull moments after making a joke about how she herself is fully vaccinated, has all of her boosters, and has not gotten COVID. I'm the type of person who cannot look at this as pure coincidence, so I really want to hear y'all's opinion about this in the comment section. After that clip, I'll show a clip which is an interview she has with Dr. Drew, where Dr. Drew explains that this sometimes happens, especially two to three weeks after somebody gets a booster shot. For y'all who have watched my videos, y'all can probably guess what my opinion on COVID is. I do not have a lot of trust in the government or the narrative, especially after the government has admitted to things like MK Ultra and the Tuskegee experiments, you know, fool me once. There's an old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. So this video is going to be about the healthcare system, and I'm also going to show some clips pertaining to the movie They Clone Tyrone, which came out during my absence. So without any further ado, I'm going to play these clips. Please like, please subscribe, and God bless. I don't care, but I want you to know, double vaxxed, booster, flu shot, and I'm going to be honest, I have the shingle shot too. And I still get my period. What? Yes. Traveled, went to Mexico twice, did shows, meet and greets, never got COVID. Clearly, Jesus loves me the most. Seriously. So nice. So nice. We looked back and I did get the booster, um, mm -hmm. which I had double Pfizer and Moderna booster um, mm -hmm. three weeks to the day of the fall. Is, is there yeah. anything that you've seen about time wise? Because, uh, you know, when I asked the doctors two to, about two to that, three. they said, oh, normally. OK, go ahead. Two to two to three weeks. Two to three weeks is where you see really? a lot of this stuff. I have a friend. I have a friend that got the booster. And he is he got really destroyed by it. He still can't walk across the room. He's having all kinds of symptoms. There's a lot of funny stuff. Uh, we don't really know what it all is and where it's coming from, but it's still worth doing it. I, I'm not I'm not at the point where I'm saying that it's it's still worth the risk, but it's got a lot of funny side effects and and syncope. It's called fainting is one of them, and I think it's yeah. from the POT syndrome, P O T T S. And so, you know, I was worried. What I wanted to check was to make sure you didn't have any evidence of myocarditis. Um, you know, when you were, you which were, is, you know, that's why I wanted that, which is an inflammation of the heart and it changes the way the heart muscle okay. functions a little bit. And that's, that's why I was red hot on that echocardiogram. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, you know, what can I do now? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think I'm going to get the fourth booster though. I will say that. <laughs> There, there is not. Yeah, I'm, there's not yet evidence. There's not I'm science done. for that I yet. Think I'm sure. done right now. If you were eighty, if you were eighty, we'd be talking. I, I literally talked about it to my seventy-five and eighty-year-old patients this morning that I was telling them, eh, "I think you're going to probably need it. You don't need it. There's no evidence for that." But the other thing that happened is you got a multi-million-dollar stroke workup, man. They did so much. They did an MRI, MRA. They did you know vascular studies of your neck and your heart. They they did a great, huge workup on you. You must have been in that MRI scanner a lot. Yeah, I think I went in a couple times. And then the, they did ultrasound for the heart and the neck area. You know, they came yeah. in. And um, yeah, I mean, I didn't know. I mean, that was my scary thing when they were like, 
okay, you're going to spend the night in the ICU. And I was like, oh, geez, you know. And then they're like, and we have to give you this sponge bath and all this stuff so that you're ready to go in case we have to do a procedure. And I was like, whoa, I, am I going to wake up with like a shaven head and you guys are going to like do an emergency brain surgery? Like, that's what I was like, do I need my husband here? Because I, I don't want that to happen. I don't want to die. But like, and then they were like, no, 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 that, that won't happen. I was like, okay. Cause I was scared. Like, do I have some ticking time bomb? Do I have some brain tumor I didn't know about? I mean, black people got an emotional attachment to this chick for lace spot. I wonder what they putting in it. And I started doing the research, you know, in the hood, there was this argument, Popeyes versus Chick-fil-A. You've seen people at Popeyes, man got shot. Man shot somebody cause they didn't have no more chicken sandwiches left. I said, this ain't no regular chicken sandwiches. So I went, and look the Popeye's chicken sandwich. Come to find out, they have over 40 ingredients in the Popeye's chicken sandwich. 32 of them were man-made chemicals. And I said, well, let's see what Chick-fil-A has. Over 50 chemicals in the chicken sandwich, over 40 of them were man-made chemicals. I said, so hell, this is a dope sandwich. They really are flipping birds over there because there's no way in the world to justify. I said it in a message and then went on the website of Chick-fil-A had it broke down where they were clicking on it, showing all of these chemicals that were in it. Do you know the next day Chick-fil-A took that down off their website? Because they don't want you to know that they're drugging you. They have you wanting the food, not for nutritional value, but because you've become addicted by the MSG and the other chemicals that they've inserted in that also are immune system disruptors. They ill affect your brain, mess with your arteries, which means our bodies, when we eat this kind of food, they are fighting a unnecessary battle. So when the real battles of disease show up, the systems are too worn out by fighting these small battles every day from bad eating that they can't handle a virus when it shows up. That's how much people internalize the propaganda for Big Pharma was that they would shape, they would be anti-intellectual enough to shame people for reading while they're wagging their finger at them for doing it. You would never shame people for trying to get informed no matter what other subject it was, no matter how unimportant. Like if I say, hey, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go buy a car. Don't look into it. Well, how will I know which car to get? Ask the salesman, he's the expert. <laughs> what are you, Henry Ford? Now, I don't want to be part of this mass genocide that I see happening. And I think that what's going on right now will be remembered as a worst time in history compared to what World War II happened. You are raising doubt about a vaccine. I hope I works. am, because I hope more people take heed of the warning that is necessary. You, you think I'm vaccinated, right? You think I have a time bomb in me and I'm going to Well, I hope not, but let me, let you, I'll be happy to meet you in three years and then see how you're doing. But you think that's possible? I think that it's probable. You, you think I'm vaccinated, right? You think I have a time bomb in me and I'm going to Well, I hope not, but... Let me, let you, I'll be happy to meet you in three years and then see how you're doing. But you think that's possible? I think that it's probable. We have some stunningly heartbreaking news to share with you this morning, that our colleague, our friend, and truly distinguished CNN journalist Drew Griffin passed away in the last 24 hours. Drew had been with CNN for nearly two decades. In that time, he was responsible for some of the most impactful journalism of this company in politics, sports, government, big business. He was a good man, a tremendous journalist, a huge part of this network. He absolutely was. He asked the tough questions, as anybody who watches CNN knows. He chased down folks who didn't want to hear them, didn't want to answer them. He made a real difference in the lives of countless people. Yeah. I've never recovered from finding out that the food pyramid was a scam. Yeah, that's just, that was just, the degree to which that's a scam is, I don't know, is there a worse medical crime in history than that? No. I mean, you know, telling Americans to load up on 7 to 11 servings of grains every single day. Yeah. yeah. Like, and to, to find out that that was a marketing ploy by the Department of Agriculture and that they went against the advice even of their own consultants mm. who warned them that they would produce an epidemic of obesity and diabetes, which is, well, and not to, to say nothing of depression and dementia which is exactly what we have now. Exactly. It's like...
I don't know what what you even do when you find out that that's true. Yeah, and the and the unwarranted demonization of natural fat containing foods, nutrient dense foods like animal source yeah. foods, which continue to be oh, de demonized. Well, yeah, even by the American Diabetic so is it Association Society? I don't remember yeah, the which idea, one yes. is still pushing the notion that you know diabetics can eat carbohydrates. Like actually, I don't think so. I don't think that's a very good idea since yeah. they're converted to sugar. There's just a simple economic fact. Let's not get conspiratorial. Let's not get emotional. We are being poisoned as a population at scale. And that's happening because the largest industry in the country, again, just as a statement of economic fact, makes money when we get sicker, when we get more depressed, when we get more infertile. The healthcare is the largest industry in the country. It's the fastest growing industry in the country. More mortgages when we drive through a neighborhood are paid for by the healthcare industry. More people, their dignity is tied to that industry. And I worked for pharma and I worked for the food industry, which we can get into, they're very connected. And the raw economic fact is that those industries are fueled by an, an imperative for not only for us to get sicker, but for kids to get sicker. Chronic disease is the greatest economic invention, the greatest profit maximizing invention in human history because it's recurring revenue and we don't die right away. And we think our savior's in a pill, we live in fear. We're told to trust the system and we keep racking up pills. Time for Health Watch and the heated debate over childhood vaccines and whether they cause autism. Yesterday, a respected British medical journal retracted a study that said the MMR vaccine may trigger autism. CBS News correspondent Richard Roth is in London with more on this stunning reversal, Richard. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. <laughs> 